anticipation for UFC 239 has been high since the International Fight Week pay-per-view cards started to come together, but before the action shifts to Las Vegas, there was a quality fight event in Minneapolis to contend with on Saturday. Headlined by heavyweights Francis Ngannou and Junior Dos Santos and boasting a wide array of intriguing and entertaining pairings, this weekend's return to the Target Center felt poised to be one of those events that doesn't carry a ton of buzz but ends up being filled with exciting performances and meaningful results. Join the zone and watch more than 100 fight nights a year than the weekend arrived, the action kicked off and the fights did, in fact, exceed expectations, with athletes like Eric Anders and Jared Gordon scoring crucial victories and newcomers in Mandaribas and Dalka Lanjambula impressing on the prelims before the main card got started. In the final preliminary card fight of the night, Ricardo Ramos delivered one of his trademark spinning elbows that landed flush and left everyone wondering how the hell newcomer journey news and remained conscious. And then once the more familiar names took the stage, business picked up. Yeah? It was that kind of night. Here's a look at what transpired on the main card and the impact those results could have going forward. Francis Ngannou blasts Junior Dos Santos for third straight first round finish via his standards, Ngannou's victory over Dos Santos on Saturday took a long time, but in reality, it was another blistering effort from the menacing knockout artist. After trading leg kicks with the former champion early, Ngannou connected with a clubbing right hand after Dos Santos overcommitted to his own strike, sending the Brazilian to the canvas. A quick flurry followed and the fight was stopped. The whole thing took 71 seconds or 10 seconds longer than it took Ngannou to earn his last two victories combined. What it means, a year ago next week, Ngannou dropped his second straight fight in a confusing, frustrating effort opposite Derek Luz. Still rattled from his loss to Stipe Miocic, the Predator couldn't pull the trigger and people were left wondering if the feared knockout artist would ever be the same. A year later, Ngannou has shown that he's back to being the more dangerous striker in the division, registering three victories in eight months in a combined 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Given his recent form, there is no question that Ngannou should face the winner of the upcoming heavyweight rematch between Daniel Cormier and Miocic, which is slated for August. Well this is sure to be a disappointing result for Dos Santos, who was hoping to earn his own title shot with a win, he remains a fixture in the upper tier of the heavyweight division and should continue to serve as a truth machine for anyone looking to earn themselves a place in the title picture. Joseph Benavides finishes Jazir Formiga, calls for a rematch with Henry Cejudo Benavides earned the first victory in the history of the UFC flyweight division, and Saturday night he added another one to his resume, finishing Formiga in the co-main event. Divisional stalwart suffered a cut near his eye early in the opening round that seemed to mess with his mojo in the first but after getting the bleeding stopped between rounds, Benavides put his scrambling skills on display in the second before finding his range and taking the fight to the Brazilian. After a pair of tremendous exchanges where he avoided giving up his back to Formiga, Benavides hurt him with a head kick and swarmed for the finish, unloading a series of blows that ultimately ended the fight. What it means, Benavides dubbed himself Joey two times, following the win, explaining that he's beaten Dustin Ortiz twice and now Formiga twice and he's focused on beating current champ Henry Cejudo for a second time whenever Triple C is ready to return to the cage. The flyweight fixture rightly pointed out that the matchup Cejudo lobbied for following his win over Marlon Morris at UFC 238 made no sense and that he's the only opponent that makes sense and anyone who argues otherwise is crazy. Benavides is 9-1 in his last 10 fights, with his lone loss coming in his return to the cage following an ACL repair. He's beaten the champion and been a good soldier throughout his career, give the man his title shot. Even though the win should have a major impact on the top of the division, the loss doesn't change anything for Formiga. 
he's been one of the best flyweights in the world for nearly a decade and he's still the third best fighter in the division today. There are just two guys who are clearly better than him and there is absolutely no shame in that. Damian Maya shuts down Anthony Rocco Martin, earns 21st career UFC win edgeless grappling as Maya moved into sole possession of second place on the all-time UFC wins list Saturday, using his tremendous top control to salt away the first two rounds against Martin and secure the victory. This was classic Maya, patiently working his way inside, initiating the clinch and smothering Martin for the majority of the first 10 minutes. One of the only changes to the pattern came when referee Vance Swerden stood the Brazilian veteran up from mount late in the second round. What was surprising to learn is that one of the judges actually scored the fight a draw, 28-28, awarding Martin a 10-8 frame in the third for marching forward and landing one, maybe two good punches the entire round. MMA judging remains terrible in so many places. What it means, in addition to moving him ahead of George St. Pierre and Michael Bisping in the record books, this win reminds everyone that despite his age and still fairly recent three fight skid, Maya remains a menace for anyone hoping to move up the welterweight rankings. Martin looked frustrated when the result was read, and it's totally understandable. He's going to watch this one back and pick himself because he was too tentative over the final five minutes. When he finally pulled the trigger, he stung Maya and started to really press forward, but it was far too little, far too late. And you have to wonder if that's something correctable or indicative of how far the Mouton chopped Martin can go in the welterweight division. If I were a betting man, I would say it's correctable and we see more urgency from Martin next time, he's in the same position and even earlier in the fight. Being aggressive is what helped him earn four straight wins heading into this one and while his hesitation was warranted and understandable, you have to play to your strengths and Martin didn't on Saturday. Think Pickle bounces Roosevelt Roberts from the ranks of the unbeaten Roberts started quickly, outworking Pickle on the feet by working behind a long jab and clean right hand. But after a slow first, the tough 15 veteran changed it up and looked to grapple, taking the fight to the unbeaten prospect and earning a clean sweep of the scorecards. Everything came down to the second round, where Roberts continued to have success with his hands, but Pickle made things grimy and finished the frame in full mount. It wasn't the festival of violence fans are used to from Pickle, but it was a savvy effort from another fun member of the lightweight middle class. what it means, there aren't a lot of takeaways here for Pickle, as he's a tough 36-year-old whose place on the roster is secure and who always delivers. He's a finished product and fun to watch and this was another reminder of those facts. What is really going to be interesting about this one is how Roberts learns from it going forward. He entered with a perfect 8-0 mark and two wins in the UFC, but got outfoxed by a savvy vet who saw an opportunity and exploited it. He has a solid foundation and there are obvious reasons to like his upside, so now it's just about how he responds to the first loss of his professional career. The framework is there for Roberts to blossom into a solid, consistent talent in the packed lightweight ranks. How he responds to this first interaction with adversity will tell you a lot about whether he'll reach those heights in the future. Drew Dober swarmed Marco Polo Reyes in most impressive effort of his career. Dober may have entered Saturday's contest off a loss, but his bout with Bill Darius earlier this year taught the affable veteran that he has the goods to hang with the best fighters in the lightweight division. His aim was to turn that confidence into a dominant effort, not only on Saturday, but going forward. Mission accomplished. What it means, Dober is not only one of the most likable, thoughtful dudes in the sport but he's also morphing into an all-action, always entertaining addition to the lightweight division in the Joe Lozon mold. He might not ever reach the top 15 because the 155-pound ranks are ridiculously deep and competitive, but he'll be a fixture in the next year for the foreseeable future, especially if he keeps delivering performances like this one.
Dilber was light on his feet, countered everything Reyes offered and swarmed as soon as he had him hurt, wrapping up the best performance of his career in just 67 seconds. Reyes looked like he fell awkwardly, so first and foremost, here's hoping his knee and or ankle are intact and there is no real structural damage. As far as his place in the division, he's in a weird place because he's now won the three over his last four, yet he's still one fight to the good. In the UFC, given the depth of the division and his willingness to engage, El Toro should get a chance to bounce back and snap his current two-fight skid. Alonzo Menafield Club's Paul Craig remains unbeaten when Craig couldn't drag Menafield to the ground, he started throwing spinning kicks. The first one was blocked and when he went back to the well, Menafield slipped off to the side, eluding the strike. When Craig landed with his back flat to the canvas, the Fortis MMA product uncorked a series of clubbing right hands that put the Scottish light heavyweight to sleep and kept Menafield in the win column. What it means, now 9-0 as a professional with seven first-round stoppage wins, including two on the Contender Series and two more. Since arriving in the UFC, the 31-year-old Menafield is quickly establishing himself as one to watch in the light heavyweight division. He showed solid takedown defense and good awareness, avoiding going to the ground with Craig and not even entertaining the idea of engaging with him on the canvas until the closing sequence of the fight, and his power is undeniable. As he continues to gain experience and seasoning, Menafield is going to be a handful because he trains with a great team and receives excellent coaching, so now it's just a matter of getting reps, learning and seeing if he can reach his full potential. For Craig, it's another example of the holes that still exist in his game and the elements he needs to improve in order to become a contender. His striking isn't at a point where opponents need to fear it and when he can't initiate grappling sequences, he's severely compromised and left grasping at straws. Now, Menafield looks like a legit prospect who could emerge as a contender over the next 12 to 18 months, so this is far from a terrible loss. That being said, he's struggled to find consistency and needs to keep working to sharpen his striking in order to create easier opportunities to grapple. UFC Minneapolis official results Francis Ngannou Def. Junior Dos Santos by TKO, strikes at 111 of round 1, Joseph Benavidez Def. Jessier Formiga by TKO, strikes at 447 of round 2, Damian Maya Def. Anthony Rocco Martin by majority decision, 29 to 28, 29 to 28, 28 to 28, Pink Pick All Def. Roosevelt Roberts by unanimous decision, 29 to 28, 29 to 28, 29 to 28, Drew Dober Def. Marco Polo Reyesco punches at 107 of round 1, Alonzo Menafield Def. Paul Craig by Co. Punches at 319 of Round 1, Ricardo Ramos Def. Journey Newsom by Unanimous Decision 30 to 27, 30 to 27, 30 to 27, Eric Anders Def. Vinicius Moreira by Co. Punches at 118 of Round 1, Jared Gordon Def. Dan Morit by Unanimous Decision 30 to 27, 30 to 27, 29 to 28, Delka Lunjambula Def. Juan Townsend by TKO, strikes at 042 of round 3, Amanda Rebus death. Emily Whitmire by submission, rear naked choke, at 210 of round 2, Maurice Green death. Junior Albini by TKO, punches at 338 of round 1. Let's block ads. Why? 